Hey everybody, Lakiana Drury here, uh, community organizer, poet, resident here of Portland, um, executive director of the nonprofit Word is Bond. Our mission is to build positive relationships between young black men and law enforcement, currently preparing for our summer internship program. But today I'm here to share some poetry as part of the Vanport Mosaic annual festival really excited to be a part of it it's going virtual this summer and we're just trying to build community in a time of uncertainty in a time of both uh pandemic crisis and then also a continued race crisis uh, in the united states here and so i'm dedicating today's performance to the family of um, ahmad aubrey who would be 26 today um, the book that i'm going to be reading from is my self-published poetry chapbook called A Rose in Grief, which I self-published this past um, January. And my poetry journey really started in September um, after I watched the movie Love Jones. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's an amazing um, black love story. And it just got me inspired to, to write um, poetry. I, I've been a writer for a number of years, mostly just through journals. I occasionally write op-eds. Um, and then there's just a ton of writing, obviously, within the nonprofit sphere. So just multiple avenues that I write, I find it. Um, it's one of my self-care practices. And, you know, one of the earliest inventions of, of mankind is, uh, humankind, I should say, is writing. So I'm going to be sharing this with you today. Um, all of the covers are handwritten, as you can see, other than my name. Um, this was actually a suggestion of one of my friends who suggested that to add like a little personal touch to it. And then the cover has a rose on it, which is the actual rose that a rose that I received that kind of became part of the title of the book. And so I um, I pressed it and then had it scanned onto the computer to add to the front of the book. And um, yeah, so I'm going to read a selection of poems for you today. And I think we will have a little Q&A afterwards. Uh, live for the first um, production of this but if not you can always um, message me they'll include my email at the bottom and if you'd like a copy of the chapbook they're ten dollars and would love to send one to you and share some of my work see me at the top of lion's head mountain the mountain i climb with my own two feet my two feet which carried me to south africa my feet which have carried me since a little boy a boy with unanswered questions and an uncertain future who grew to a man with a future as wide as the ocean behind me the ocean which surrounds robin island the island which caged nelson mandela the cell which held his body but not his message the message of freedom the message which has been carried by countless vanguards across the ages a message that desmond sang a message that Anne sang. I too sing the song of freedom. See me, Lucky Anna, as with my spear. See me as I sing the song of freedom. See me as I travel the world. See me as I break the rules, the rules I refuse to follow, created by those who refuse to see. See me, Lucky Anna, as I march to the beat of my own drum, my drum which my mother gave me, my mother who conceived me with my father, my father from which I got my name, my name from which I got my spear, my spear which I sharpen myself as I carry with me to blaze my path in my search for my destiny. See me, Lucky Anna, see me with my spear. Um wrote that in Cape Town, South Africa. It's obviously about my name, which is about a little boy with a spear. And I believe that names hold a lot of power. They are uh, an essential aspect of us. And I find it a very interesting too, that at least at birth, we don't choose our names, um, but yet they, they, they just carry such a special meaning. And so, you know, my identity has largely been shaped around that. So uh, that's where that came from, my rendition of that folktale about my name. This next poem is called A Poem for Black Boys, and it needs no introduction. This is a poem for black boys who read comic books and watch science fiction movies. A poem for black boys who play ball and rock jays. 
From waves and fades to afros, dreadlocks, high tops, cornrows, curls, and kink. From what you mix with black boys to you so black, you purple black boys. For black boys who never left black boyhood. Emmett, Trayvon, Keyshawn, and so many more. For black boys with black moms and black boys with white moms and black boys with two moms and black boys with no moms. For too many black boys without fathers, don't grow up to be like your daddy, they say. For black boys in the classroom and black boys on the block, from black boys who can read to black boys who can draw, for black boys without internet, for black boys who sag and black boys who wear high waters, take that thing off your head before you come inside, they say. Here's my truth to you, black boy. Don't let yourself be defined by someone else's expectations of you. I said, don't let yourself be defined by someone else's expectations of you. See, black comes in so many colors. Brown, black, beige, coffee, double rich chocolate, Almond, walnut brown, pumpkin spice latte, caramel brown, honey oak, and even brown with a hint of chocolate cocoa and cinnamon. Don't forget your name. Don't forget how to cry. Don't forget Africa. You are your brother's keeper. You are your sister's exalter. Sincerely, a former black boy. This is dedicated to Dante, Deontay, Cortez, Kyle, Lucky, Nigel, Sadiq, Kishan, Samaje, Ibrahim, Eben, Amant, Lance, Damarie, Iman, Juwan, Chase, Samaritan, Elijah, Kalanji, Sebastian, Achille, Amarian, David, Jazion, Michael, Travel, Elias, Jamari, Mo, Zaikir, Habib, Brett, Nathaniel, Isaiah, and now, as I had mentioned early, I want to dedicate to Ahmad but also more importantly, or as importantly, to all the black boys uh, struggling to grow in today's society. God, I believe in myself. I believe in my truth and the truth of others. I believe, believe in liberation. I believe in multiple realities and universes. I believe the universe bends. I believe in energy. I believe in death and also the possibility is that it is not the finality of existence. God is the audacity to question. God is the antithesis of dogma. God is a concept, not a being. But if he was a being, he would probably be that woman you see struggling with her mental health on the bus that you keep referring to as a crackhead. The universe is a cosmic vagina, menstruating consciousness that gives birth to infinity. That poem was called, I believe, excuse me, I don't believe in angels. <clears throat> Next poem uh, is called You Are Marvelous, and it is dedicated to Dinkanesh. You are marvelous, my Ethiopian queen. It has been a long walk from Hadar. Our family has been strained since we climbed out of that valley. The bipedal revolution gave birth to global conquest. Who knew planting seeds would change the world? What seeds do we sow today? You gave birth to children, black and rich, like the sediment that spills into the land, the black land, land of the bow. You are marvelous. Building greatness against the river that flows against conventional wisdom, all glory to Kerma, oils burning in the defufa, Ancient kings lie in state. 
Your children were the Cush. More temples than Egypt, that's word to Moreau. Steeped in the mysteries of Kemet, we taught their philosophers. Feats so grand, they are attributed to extraterrestrials. Mathematics derived without computers, stones moved without machines, knowledge gained and disseminated by dark-skinned scholars, secrets that were never meant to be discovered, temples that stood the test of time. You are marvelous. Caravans navigating the impenetrable deserts, life and death, the difference between a mirage and an oasis. Your children were traitors, reaching the far corners of the earth, bringing with them goods that were the envy of the world, gold and ebony, ivory and myrrh, and knowledge too. A hundred thousand papyrus manuscripts, a hundred camels saddled with gold from Mali to Mecca and back. You are marvelous. Sailing out of a solar pit aboard a majestic barge, oars of Lebanese cedar dip sunlight as it climbs into the cosmos high above the blue green pearl, headed for the field of reeds. A sarcophagus rests dignified on the bridge atop an altar of cattle skulls. Inside, your bones rest free at last. Skin drums and a goo goo play a heroic tune. A harp with 42 strings plucks an accompaniment. The barge rises further still, burgeoned by the winds of a thousand empires of unacknowledged greatness, a millennia of footsteps lost in time. You are marvelous. Again, that's dedicated to Dinkanesh. Uh, I won't say anything else about it. Uh, look her up. Um, it'll all make sense. But I think the poem uh, also speaks to itself. This is called Reverse Awkward Silence. And um, it is dedicated to the experience of being black in Portland and just observing that experience. Chant spits about niggas from the speakers in the coffee shop windows. The white barista's playlist with her biggie t-shirt and white chucks. I observe from my seat in my John Lennon t-shirt and Gray Cortez's. There's only one other nigga in here besides me. Everyone else is as lily as the walls. It's like an awkward silence, but in reverse, see, we lost domain of that word long ago. Now you can find it wafting through the air of your local coffee shop, mixing with the smell of freshly ground coffee as you sip your steamed latte with oat milk. This poem uh, is the final poem that I'll read. It's called Bound Together, and it's dedicated to my brother Prince, who passed away this past November. Um, but it is also in honor of that grief, the shared grief of a people, the grief that flares up at certain times that we never quite uh, forget. Quiet fishermen rowing along the calm river. The setting sun silhouetting your lean frame against a backdrop of mangrove trees. Fishing in a canoe made from a hollowed log, a thin beam of wood encrusted with barnacles embedded into the flesh of the vessel. It is a testament to human ingenuity and a belief in small miracles. Tautly muscled arms thrust the paddle through the water with purposeful strokes. What are you thinking, quiet fishermen, as you paddle up and down the river? Do you find peace in the silence where memories of civil war and the reality of poverty become a skyline of shadows that frame the horizon? Far off outlines that just for at least a moment are just shadows in the distance. A slice of time where you can finally hear yourself think. 
where the monotony of fishing allows your mind to wander, to dream of schemes to take you and your family from this place, to rise above the commotion, the despair. Do you feel forsaken in this moment? Or at once, for once, in control of your destiny? Perhaps a bit of both, quiet fisherman. The work is hard, but you show no signs of fatigue. The world has turned its back on you, yet you find hope. Returning to the shore with a bucket full of crabs. Not for self, but for others. Purposeful hands at work. In perpetual motion, Pele and Zandi blood flowing through your veins. I have watched these hands do many things. Bend discarded metal into floating dream catchers to escape the reality, <clears throat> the nightmares of reality. Pray forcefully in a frenzied storm of noise to drown out the blasphemy of abject poverty. Scoop water from a crack in our canoe that trickles in like a slow death. Sew shoes back together with soles that peeled so far back, they mocked the earth with each step. Emphasize ideas and articulate points of a stubborn lecture that falls on deaf ears. Hands as busy as your mind and as dark as the mud. Good hands, strong hands, hands of God. America is heaven, they say. Many people suffer in Africa, entire families swept out by war, by disease, by famine. But God kept me and my family for a purpose. Two sons, one dark, one light, tall, thin bodies walking through the streets Kindred spirits reunited, two brothers on the beach, sitting in the sand, two brothers from Monrovia, bound together. I found the page in my poetry book where I wrote down words from our last phone call we would ever share. You, me, and dad. Now it's just me and dad, and you are gone left to carry the grief and pick up the pieces of the family. They say there are five stages to grief, but I never bothered to read them. And I can't even remember what we talked about. Dad said it was primarily about you coming to visit. Just four words and your email address. I read three poems on the day my brother was buried. Carry me down to the river one last time, the river where the mangroves grow, behind the house where we eat rice and palm butter, where the children play and have a jolly jolly time. Carry me up the street, let's stroll down Sinkor until we find the Fula man with his fresh bread. I realize now that you always belong to Liberia. You are Monrovia's son and were never mine to save. And I know why no one knows when they will die. See, one never completes all their tasks in life, like the canoe which sits by the river in two pieces. Let's go fishing one last time and talk about life and talk about what we will do when we are all together, reunited, see. I see you now, quiet fisherman, a silhouette on the river, somewhere beyond the sand and the dirt, the rain, and the dust. Thank you for listening again. My name is Lakiana Drury, and this was poems from my poetry chapbook, self-published, A Rose in Grief. Thank you for your time. Thank you to Laura and everybody else over at the Van Pork Mosaic, the other performers and folks that are participating in the festival. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you listening to my poetry. Um, my challenge to you is to go out and write something. It doesn't have to be a poem. It could be whatever it, it, that you want. It could be two sentences. It could be two words. It could rhyme or not rhyme. But just write um, and enjoy the power that that brings and the freedom as well. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed listening. Bye-bye.